It is Tuesday, September 3rd, 2019 years after the pronounced death of Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> That's my favorite way to start. Thank you. This is the 100th episode. We've done a lot of shows, 99 of them before this one. Mm-hmm. This one might be the best one yet. Ever. I don't know if that's an actual statement. <laughs> Jacoby Brissett, hot topic right now. Mm-hmm. Just got paid $30 million yesterday. Slightly before that, he sat down with us for a 30 minute conversation about his life right now. And now he is all of a sudden QB1 in Indianapolis. There was Peyton Manning, there was Andrew Luck. Now there is Jacoby Brissett. We had a great conversation with him. He opened up with us too. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Don't know how he did it. With all that money. <laughs> <laughs> this show is brought to you by our presenting sponsor, SeatGeek. SeatGeek is the greatest ticket buying platform on planet Earth and the, the moon. moon. That's right. 50 years ago, a guy named Neil Armstrong Ever heard of him? hopped up in a rocket with his boy Buzz Aldrin, and he decided to go to the moon. And Ooh. they said when they got back that when they were up there, if they were to buy tickets to something, they would have utilized the SeatGeek app because they know that SeatGeek is going to give them the best prices for the best tickets available. Because what SeatGeek does is they scan all the other ticket buying platforms. All of them. Mm-hmm. All, all of them, Nick. All the other ticket buying platforms. Hmm. And they say, huh, you're doing it for what? We should do it for this then. See that? And that's why SeatGeek gets the best prices. Right now, you use promo code PET. Get $10 off your first order. Promo code McAfee, 20 American dollars off wow. your first order. Wow. Good God. Absolute insanity. By the way, it's live event season. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah it is. Go to a foosball game. Mm-hmm. A lot of them. College, NFL, CFL. Mm-hmm. You name it. Go to a game. Get off your couch. Get off your couch. Mm-hmm. Get off. Don't be an armchair quarterback. Yeah. Be an in the stands quarterback. Oh, cool. mm-hmm. huh? I like that. With your friends at SeatGeek. Also, if you want to go to a theater show, maybe there's a play you're, you've been itching to watch. Oh, that'd be nice. I, I've always wanted to see... Uh, Cats. Nailed it. Oh. I've been on. oh, I've always wanted to see... Uh, Fiddler on the Roof. Oh, I've always wanted to see... Book uh, of Mormon. Oh, oh, I've always wanted to see... Simpsons. Guys shot the other the salesman. Guy. The Jonas never De- 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 Death of a Salesman. Not okay. Crocker. We're not at concerts yet, Foxy. Joe I- Bros was an easy way out of that. You just said. I was trying to see how far we would go. He was oh, very okay, eager okay. with that. I, I like Joe Bros, though, by the way. Yeah, yeah. Hey, I could have went to Joe Bros with uh, Greeny. Yeah. Would have met Joe Bros. Oh. Joe Bros could have been our guest today. Instead, Jacoby Brissett. So I do apologize for a little mm. bit of a letdown for you pop fans like myself. We can get them on the show. They're going to be out here soon. We won't be in town. <laughs> you'll, you'll hear all about our schedule coming up in the show. It's an insane <sighs> one. But no, if you're going to go to a concert, live event, or any game, SeatGeek has the best tickets for you at the best price. Promo code PAT, $10 off. Promo code McAfee, $20 off your first order. A little self-awareness. If we're already rich, go ahead and use PAT for $10 off. If we're not rich yet, and we're on our way, McAfee for $20 off first order. We appreciate you. Let's get right into it with you, Kobe Brissett. Ladies and gentlemen, live from the indoor practice facility in Indianapolis, Indiana, for the Indianapolis Colts, we are joined by... The starting quarterback, Jacoby Brissett. How's it going, man? It's going good. We're hearing that all the time. <laughs> yeah, you are the starting quarterback for the Indianapolis Colts right now. Yeah, I am. This has been quite a couple-week run here, not only for you, but for an entire organization. A couple years ago, you came to the team like 10 days before the season started. Seven. Seven, sorry, that's on me. Kind of got baptized by fire getting thrown into the offense. And now this year you've had a couple years under your belt, about to get into it. We'll talk about that soon. Uh, you are originally going to go to Florida, ended up at NC State. Well, I did go to Florida for yep. two years and okay. transferred to NC State. Okay, why would you transfer? Uh, Charlie, Weiss, Charlie Weiss left. Uh, we got a new OC and uh, Jeff Driscoll was a quarterback. And I, they told me I wasn't going to play, so I got out of there. So you go to NC State, you ball out. Absolutely ball out for the Wolf Pack. How? QBU. Relax. <laughs> Is it QBU? Yeah, it's QBU. How come? We have the most starting quarterbacks in the NFL. Okay. Including you. Who to me? Philip. Mr. Rivers. Uh, Russell. Oh, right, yeah. So you're going to say the Wisconsin Yeah, Yeah, I mean, there was quite a situation right. there with Russell. And then we have two other guys that's in the league. Okay, so you come from QBU. 
you end up being a third round draft pick to the New England Patriots. Yeah. When you go to the New England Patriots as a quarterback, there's obviously the greatest quarterback of all time in Tom Brady and a very handsome Italian kid named Jimmy G. <laughs> Did you expect that to be an awkward situation and then you guys became tight, it became like a wolf pack? Yeah. Do you think that situation maybe helped you with this situation? Uh, no question. Uh, you know, it's two guys that I can always lean on. And, uh, you know, and the, the stuff that I've learned from those guys has been invaluable. Uh, things that I still, you know, carry over to this day. Um, and it's a bond and a friendship that, you know, is going to last a long, a long time. You get traded over here. Uh, Jimmy G is now obviously starting quarterback for the Niners. Tom Brady's going to play for probably another 35, 40 years. Hopefully. Legit, though. Are you on the TB12 treatment? No, I'm not on it, but I'm, I'm for him playing for that long. <laughs> He's good, man. What did you learn behind the scenes about Tom Brady? Uh, you know, I... You know what I always say. You know, it's his preparation. Uh, you know, his his uh, his mindset going into the game of knowing his assignment, knowing you know the other team their weakness, and just being disciplined to exploit it. You know, play after play, and you know he finds the guy that he knows can't beat him, and he's gonna beat him. You know. Did he hit you up after this whole thing came to be? Yeah, and we we talk very uh, fairly often, but uh, he hit me up. Uh, you know, probably like two days afterwards. And you're tight with Bill Parcells as well, I've yeah. heard. Close. 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 I assume you got a flooded with messages after this whole thing came to be. Jacoby Brissett became a hot name. You were trending, I believe, right alongside Luck. So I'm assuming everybody hit you up. What were all the messages from all your close people? What uh, one stuck out? Uh, it was a lot of, you know, support. Uh, a lot of people, uh, a lot of numbers that I didn't know. So I'm sorry if I didn't. Oh, you're blowing people off. You're starting quarterback no, in the no, NFL now. No, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to do what you got to do. But, uh, you know, a lot of support, uh, you know, and just just a lot of love being spread. Uh, you know, uh, the the message that I kind of that kind of stuck out the most was somebody just texts me and goes, uh, you know, like, it's crazy how things turn out. And uh, it was a, a long list of stuff that went on in that text message, but it's just the, the message of like, it's crazy how a lot of things went out, just based on, you know, how things have gone in my career. Uh, you know, it's just the opportunity has presented itself. What did you learn from two years ago? Where you got wins, and you can't say it, but I'll say it. It was a bad team, a bad situation for you. Everything was looking bad, and you still got wins. Willed the team to wins. What did you learn from that season a couple years ago that you'll carry with you now? Uh, you know, control what I can control. Uh, you know, when I, when I stepped in two years ago, it was more so it was just, you know, I was trying to, you know, think that I was controlling a lot of things because I didn't know something, so I was trying to, you know, control, like, what this person is doing, what this person is doing, rather than just, you know, understanding my job uh, and trusting that you know, everybody else is doing their job too. Uh, and I think that being in this system, being around these guys for, you know, three years, but been in the system two years, uh, has given me a lot of that, you know, clarity of being able to trust other guys and, and control, you know, my game rather than trying to control the, the big piece. Watching Lux and the Indianapolis Colts' success second half of last year. I'm assuming that type of thing helps you out too because you watch what Luck was able to do within the system, what worked, what didn't work. Now they're going to be kind of catering to you within the system. What did you learn from last year with the success? Uh, I think what, you know, when you look back and watch what Andrew did, it was, he did what was best for him, you know, what he thought was his strengths. And, uh, you know, Frank and Nick and uh, Marcus do a good job of, of playing to, you know, their quarterback strength. So, you know, that's the thing with me is to be honest with myself and be honest with them and, you know, and tell them, you know, this is what I feel comfortable doing and being able to, you know, stick with that. You can spin it. A little bit. Hey, <laughs> you can spin it. And you're an incredible basketball player from what I've heard. I've never seen you play. I heard you're great. You should probably watch. Best on the team? Oh, by far. You're better than T.Y.? Hey. I won't even answer that question on, on camera. Wow. Does T.Y. know that you feel this way? I said that answer on camera, so he'll see it. So he, he'll vouch for me. Hey, he's a hooper now. He's got a good jumper. Okay. But you're an athlete. You can spin it. What are your, I don't want to say your upside whenever you play, but what should Colts fans look forward to watching Jacoby Brissett do? Uh, well, I want to get the, the scout report because other people probably <laughs> that aren't Colts fans are probably watching to go on. And, uh, but, okay, you know, so the kid can run, all right. Do everything that I, I yeah. But, uh, you know, just a player that's going to play hard, you know. Leave it all out on the field. Uh, hopefully smart. Uh but uh, just like I said, a guy that's just going to play hard, you know, and not trying to be anything else, you know, like everybody's 
kind of saying like, what are you going to do to fill in for Andrew? I, I can't fill in for Andrew. I can just, you know, step in as Jacoby, you know, and that's, that's just my mindset. A couple years ago, whenever you came in a week before the season, I watched you and it was interesting because I was watching from home and I knew a lot of people on the team, right? I had just left. Watching you call the entire team up on the sideline during a game and kind of like give a rally the troops type speech was something that I was watching. I was like, damn, I like that. Like I was a big fan of watching it happen. Andrew kind of shied away from that in the public eye. Private, I think he did it. But I enjoyed watching you kind of take command of the team like that. Since then, everybody has talked about how the locker room loves you. What is your leadership style? Are you a guy that's not afraid to speak up a little bit? Are you a do as I say and as I do type guy? No, no, I'm kind of the... You know, uh, uh, how would I describe my leadership? It's more so just, you know, I kind of just feel people out. You know, I'm about, like, getting to know people in relationships and, you know, understanding, like, uh, you know, we all have a, a, a bigger picture. Yep. Uh, so, you know, I kind of like, you know, you saw me last year kind of running into pictures and stuff like that. Yeah. But with that comes, like, you know, when I'm in practice at, at times, you know, I'm a – I'm going to get after it, you know. So it's a mixture of, you know, being hard and being, like, you know, the, to, like, follow this, follow this. But at other times, you know, just letting it happen, you know, organically. If you're friends with everybody on the team, then people are playing. Like, I've always talked about chemistry being the ultimate X factor in a locker room. I played on great teams. I played on terrible teams. The teams that are great all liked each other. It seems as if the camaraderie in this locker room is very high, even though there's crazy circumstances right now. This team seems to really like each other. Is it, am I accurate in reading yeah, that? no question. And I think uh, not more so like, but we respect each other. We respect each other's, you know, goals. We respect each other's, uh, you know, game and preparation that, you know, I won't let myself fall behind because I know that this person isn't. Uh, and I yep. think that's... Uh, what you know frank has instilled in a lot of us you know and um, we just carry that with us every day there's an incredible gift right now <laughs> there is an incredible gift there's a couple out there floating around the internet there is a couple you sprinting to get into the photos i completely forgot about that too you mentioned it great athleticism by the way Thank you. it's not easy to make it down there in time to get the photo yeah i heard my hamstring a couple times <laughs> Uh, Jacoby Brissett is now on IR yeah. due to photo bombing. No, the the gif of your face talking to Andrew Luck on the sideline in that notorious third preseason game with the Adam Schefter bomb happening in the third quarter. Was that the moment? You can clear this up. I'll clear it up. Was that the moment you were told by Andrew? No. Okay. But it was the moment that he told me that the tweet went out. Okay, so it did have something to do with it. Yeah, it did have something to do with it. But I'll end it. My face showed the my expression. Incredible. Yeah, I don't know how they caught that, but... Oh, the internet is undefeated. The, inter- the internet... They find everything. They will find everything. So that was the moment that Andrew said to you, yeah, it's already been mentioned publicly. Everybody in this stadium knows right now. Yeah, that and I-, I didn't even... I guess it went out before he even told me. But then I, like, went up to him. He called me over. And then I just heard people, like, in the background. I'm like, wait, oh, the tweet really did go out. Your face is one of the greatest facial expressions I've ever seen in my life. Utter disbelief out of nowhere, just complete boom, and then you see you try to save the conversation. What a moment there, and I know you guys are past it. You have to be. The NFL is a season where you only get so many opportunities. If you were to dwell on the things that happened in the past, you'd never be successful in the future. But since that situation happened, which is massive, is the reason why we're here, the reason why you're a starter. The other reason why you're talking to me. I would like to talk to you because of your tweets. (laughs) All right, I like your tweets. I'm a big fan of a guy that tweets. Gotcha. I've been, I've been lacking. I've been a little busy lately. So. Yeah, there's a lot of shit going on. Sorry. That's all right. But I'll that that situation with Luck took over the world. Literally took over the world. What was your initial thoughts whenever you heard it was going to happen? When Andrew, I assume, told you that he was going to retire before the world found out. What were your initial thoughts on it? And what is the thought of the team moving forward? Uh, when he first talked, when he first told me, I, I couldn't believe it. Just because, like, I know how much Andrew loves, which you know how much yeah. Andrew loves football, you know. Uh, and he'll tell you how much football has, like, consumed his life. And, uh, you know, we probably talked about an hour and a half that day. And I just saw how happy he, you know, gradually became after, like, throughout the conversation after he told me his reasons and stuff. And, you know, when I walked out, I was like, 
at peace with him like making his decision uh, especially as a teammate you know you kind of you want your teammates to be able to feel like they can live with their decisions that's on the field and off the field yep. uh, and, you know I, and I saw that in him so I, after that like you know I was still shocked uh, for a couple of days but then you know I was happy for him I talked to him like you know we talked fairly regularly after that uh, and I like it just made me happy like to see him like I would assume you being happy for him by the way went a long way for him like when I was retiring, I everybody knew I was retiring basically for a few months leading up to it. But my big thing was I was scared that my teammates were going to be pissed off at me, right? Yeah. I was scared that Vinatieri was going to be mad at me because I held his balls perfectly for eight years. Probably got to rephrase that a little bit, but I get what you're going with. <laughs> <laughs> I was scared that he was going to hate me, though. I was scared that people were going to feel like I let them down. I would assume Luck felt that same way. So you giving him at the end of that conversation, like, hey, man, we're happy for you. Probably went a long way for him. You're, you're a good friend without even knowing it, I'd assume. Appreciate it. I, I mean, I try to be. And, you know, we, our friendship will probably last. What if not probably will last, you know, longer than both our football careers. So, uh, you know, I'm just happy that he's at peace. Did you know that he hated you? At first, I kind of got the sense that he hated me. Just he came back? He was when like, he, this uh, fucking him. guy. Yeah, he's like, who the fuck's this guy? <laughs> like, fuck you too, man. Because <laughs> he even mentioned it. I mean, that was a big moment for him, that press conference. All eyes were on him. And he even talked about how when I got back, I was incredibly jealous of this guy. I hated him. And then your friendship grew through that. Did the Wolf Pack going into a potentially awkward situation, becoming friends, help you become friends with Andrew in that situation? Uh, Somewhat. But it's, I kind of, my personality, you know, like, I, I can't be, I can't hate anybody, you know? So... It just gradually, like, we, I used football and, uh, you know, how we were doing on the field as a tool to, like, kind of get to know him off the field. And then, you know, before I know it, we were, like, just hanging out, talking. He's an interesting dude. Yeah, he, that's to say the least. He is, and he doesn't care that he's At an all. interesting dude. I've always said that Andrew Luck is an anomaly. He's the prototype of an NFL quarterback. Big, he's an avatar, he's got a great arm. But then you place like this hipster nerd right inside of that body. And it's just like this incredible recipe of a guy who was so fun to be around and incredible to watch as a football player. Your team now. Did you talk to the offense? Did you did Coach Reich have you do anything or is it just kind of day to day, here we go? No, Business I mean, as usual. Talk as a or like as a team, you know, Frank talk and, and Ballard talk, which everybody saw. Uh, but uh you no know, not just me alone, but other you know leaders stepped up and uh, you know talked to the team because uh, it was it, it was a you know it, like I went traumatic is the wrong word, but in a it's sense, huge it was a, a shocking event. Hell yeah! Uh, and it, a lot of players, you know, like I said, a lot of players come here to play with luck. A lot of players, you know, respect him enough and have played with him a long time, so they felt a certain type of way. Uh, not mad or anything, but just shocked and you know not hurt because he did it, but like hurt because they won't see him and be around him uh, for a while, well, forever. But <laughs> he's not dead; he'll be around. Yeah, exactly. But uh, so it was just more so, just kind of like clearing the air, and I kind of felt like I had this, you know. What'd you say? Uh, you, you don't know, have just, to do the whole thing. Yeah, but I won't. just the gist. But you know, just the expectation doesn't change. Uh, you know, hold me to the same standard, if not a higher standard, uh, and and just go to work every day you know and that's what they're gonna get out of me tom brady didn't get into bledsoe got hurt right yeah. tom brady comes in this dude who didn't even play at michigan nobody knows who he is voila greatest quarterback of all time everybody has to have an opportunity open up for them yeah. that's what has to happen it's the way the nfl is yeah. you're getting that opportunity now has there been a moment where you're like looking in the mirror holy shit here we go now we go has there uh, been any of those? It actually was. You know, the next day I drove and I was coming to, to work and, you know, I sat in my car for like 10, 15 minutes and I was like, shit, like, <laughs> when I walk through these doors, it's, I guess it's official, you know? Yeah. But, uh, but I'll probably say that day the next day. I'm so happy for you, man. Appreciate it, man. Have you learned any answers to your deep internet thoughts that you've tweeted out there? Uh, some answers. But, more uh, questions. More questions. You asked, if the sun is hot, why is space cold? Yeah. An age-old internet question. Have you learned the answer? Uh, NASA gave me some, like... NASA reached out to you? Yeah, they, they like, tweeted me back. Some, some answer that led me to other questions. What I've been taught is it's, like, Bluetooth. Okay, so the sun's hot, and it Bluetooths the heat. Just to Earth. 
to our atmosphere, yeah. But just to Earth? Yeah, Earth is the speaker, okay? The sun is the phone, Bluetoothing the heat to Earth. But what about everything else in space? Yeah, I got a lot of questions too, Jacoby. I'm, you see where I'm going? I see where you're going. I'm trying to go to space, actually. Are you going to go to space? No, not a chance. If you weren't a professional football player, what would you be? Uh, it, I would try to be a basketball player. You were that nice, huh? No, I wouldn't say I was that nice, but I said I was try. What are you looking forward to most? The process, the whole thing? Yeah, just the whole thing, man. I, when I think, like, people are like, what game are you, like, most excited for? I was like, First yeah, I, I think I'm more excited for practice, like, than the game. Like, you know, just practicing is just... I, I get more nervous for practice than I do for a game. How come? Uh, I don't know why. I just... You put so much emphasis on getting better. Yeah, exactly. If you don't get better, you get worse. Everybody yeah, says it. Yeah. So, so if you that, waste a day out there... Yeah, then I feel like I kind of let myself down, let the team down. What type of music you listen to? I listen... I actually saw somebody tweet about... I hate when everybody says they listen to everything, but have you listened to, like, this genre? Like, not nah, Steve. But... I kind of listen to a majority of everything. Me too, by the way. Yeah. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I mean, there's some shit I won't listen to. Yeah, no question. We all won't listen to, like... There's some bad stuff. Yeah, dumb shit. But yeah, know. we don't need that, by the way. Whenever we say everything, we obviously don't need the terrible music that yeah. is out there. When I say everything, I mean everything that I like. You like Avicii? See, I don't listen to that shit. It's unbelievable. His new album, Tim, great. Never heard of it. You should listen to it. I think it's good. Like what genre of music? Avicii? House music. Like, play it in your house or just... No, no, like... What do you listen to before the game? Any pregame rituals? Uh, Music-wise, not really. I mean, I listen to whatever just comes on. Come on. What do you do? Just shuffle on your old yeah, phone? Yeah, I probably just shuffle my phone. I just got good music on my phone. That's it. None of that bad shit. None of the bad shit. So. You're going to add Avicii in there, though, after this conversation. I, I probably won't. I won't lie to you and say I will. You will? I won't. I'm going to get it in your locker somehow. I'm going to make sure you hear it. The album, Tim, is incredible. T.Y. Hilton is a noted all-pro in this league. Incredible. Underrated all-pro. Most underrated wide receiver in the league. Yeah. That is not even a doubt. He's quiet, publicly. We know the difference. <laughs> we know the difference. Publicly, he's quiet. Yeah. Uh, have you and him, because obviously he was tight. Every quarterback is normally pretty tight with their number one wide receiver. Yeah. And whenever it turns the opposite direction, it can get ugly, although T.Y. doesn't have that personality. Yeah. It is a relationship that you have to build. How are you and T.Y.? Uh, good. You know, like I had the two, uh, 2017 stint with T.Y., so it was like I wasn't like a new guy when, yeah. when Andrew you know, retired. So. We've had a relationship that's been growing for, you know, three years, uh, so to say. So, you know, we kind of are past the, like, like, yeah, like, awkward. Trying, yeah, the awkward stage, you know. So, but, you know, we had, you know, probably a couple good conversations after you know, the retirement because obviously I knew, like, that's one of his best friends, you know, he's been with him for eight years, came in the same draft class. So, you know, we had a bunch of good conversations and then, you know, he's, you know, T.Y., like, he's the guy. Of football now, you know, so it's like. I you know, love T.Y., yeah, man. Exactly. I think he deserves a lot more credit than he gets. No question. Hoyer just got signed. Yeah. Good deal for Hoyer, too, by the way. I mean, I'm, I, I never talk about other people's money, yeah, but, but hey, good deal for Hoyer. Deal for <laughs> Hoyer. I'm all uh, for it. Did you hear how happy he was right there for Hoyer and his money? Mm hmm. Good guy. Oh, look how happy he was. Yeah. Man. Selfless. A good teammate. Did you hear him even say a lot of money for him? Mm -hmm. Nine million. Good karma, that money. guy said. A lot of money for him. He signed his name and got $20 million. <laughs> the same day he just said that, he signed his name and got $20 million. The first thing he should buy with that $20 million, yeah. the first thing Hoyer should buy with that $9 million he's getting, a Lisa mattress. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, yeah. You sleep way better. You might have seen a video that I posted yesterday. The Lisa mattress is the best mattress on planet Earth. Mm -hmm. Not only is it comfortable and convenient, it shows up at your door in a box that takes less than three minutes to unbox and put into a perfect place. Not only is it incredibly comfortable, which it is, they're also good people. Oh, right yeah. Now. The best. A few months ago, we stopped by a domestic violence sanctuary with mm -hmm. them, and they donated 100 beds to the domestic violence sanctuary just because. Lisa Sleep said, hey, we just want to donate just because. We want to leave the world a better place than we found it. And not only do we have the greatest beds of all time, we'd like to be known as the greatest company of all time. And today, yesterday, 
They had some random guy, not a delivery guy, Mm-mm. because it was Labor Day, can't have a delivery yeah. guy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They had some random dude show up at our doorstep here, wheel in a queen size bed, mm-hmm. and say, Hey, Pat, we know you're about to have a crazy busy fall, so you're probably going to be sleeping at the office sometime. Go ahead and sleep on this bed. I was wow. like, You know what? Thank you. They didn't have to do so that. Nice. They did not have to do that. Lisa was looking out for me yesterday. Yeah. They were looking out for the domestic, domestic violence survivors a couple mm-hmm. months ago. Mm-hmm. And for everybody listening, they're looking out for you too. Right now, $250 off and two free pillows. Oh, my oh, God. God. <laughs> Those if, pillows are legit. They man. are. Oh, my hey, God. They're so soft. Don't sleep. Oh. Sleep on <laughs> Attaboy. the pillows. Yeah. Lisa.com forward slash McAfee. That's M C A F E E E S P N. L E E S A dot com forward slash McAfee for $250 off and two free pillows. You've been thinking about getting a new bed. You're like, oh, I don't sleep as well. But I don't want to go to the mattress store and lay on all these creepy mattresses no. where all these other creepy people have been laying. You know who else I don't want to deal with? Mattress salesman. Oh, the worst, dude. Oh, the you're, dirty. You're going to love this bed here. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody that comes in loves this bed right here. I even laid on it myself <laughs> last night. <laughs> Would you keep going? I yanked my crank on this there. <laughs> <laughs> there it was. Lisa.com forward slash McAfee. Deal with none of that. No crank yanking. Oh, yeah. Just straight sleep bank again. Yep. Bank and sleep. sleep bank yeah. and sleep. Bank and sleep. Hey, bank and sleep. Bank it nice. up. Lisa.com forward slash McAfee. $250 off and two free pillows. And also thanks to them for sending me a mattress to sleep on here because mm. the fall is going to be insane. Speaking of an insane fall, QB1. Let's get back to it. You and Hoyer know each other well. Yeah. QB room is a big deal for a quarterback. No question. You and Hoyer know each other well? Yeah. You yeah. like him? Yeah, I like him a lot. He's he's a good dude. Real good dude. Yeah, because you're all part of that wolf pack there. Uh I wouldn't just throw him into the wolf pack, but he's in the he's in the clan, you know. He's in the group. Hey, the wolf pack stuff to get yeah. into. Yeah, you got you gotta be serious about that type of stuff. You can't just let anybody in just because they've been in the same room. I have a hundred percent passing rate on Thanksgiving. I think maybe I get a shot at the Wolfpack one day. I saw your I saw your picture uh, of trying to be QB two. See that? Probably work on a little bit of, of mechanical things, but ball behind the ear. Yeah, but it was, hip square to target. I couldn't see where the target was. It was right in front of me. All right, well then that your mechanics are bad on that picture. But I saw your pass is swoop. That was nice. Thank that you. Nice. I give you respect on that. The one in the picture you can't see it. It was a seventy-five yard ball. So. What, just like on air? No, no. It was to a, uh, no, it was a uh, full defense, a whole, I had to read the safety and everything. That's probably why somebody was standing directly right behind you. Well, I mean, you got to protect the goods. Right. You know what I mean? You need a red jersey. How's your sliding? You're a pretty good slider? No. Probably got to work on that now or just run out of bounds. Or yeah, because this is a big deal. And I think this was something Andrew had to learn that whenever he was young. Not that you're young, but I'm just saying. I'm young. For Andrew, you are young. But Andrew... He thought it made him tougher whenever he wouldn't slide or t- he would take a big shot. And Vinatieri, OG, was like, hey, man, a lot smarter if you're just good, a lot better for everybody if you're just a healthy guy. Yeah. Has Vinatieri, have you got a chance to talk to Vinny at all? Uh, you like Vinny. Have I had a chance? You know, I, I work with him. Obviously, I talked to him. Well, I'm happy talking you talked to the kicker, by the way. I'm happy. You... about, like, my sliding technique? No, just in general. Oh, life. yeah, we talked a couple times since then. But, Because yeah. I believe just like everybody else believes. This team is a good team. And I think you're going to absolutely crush. And just like I said with Tom, just like with everybody else, when one door closes, what happens, Jacoby? I don't know. I think now the Jacoby Brissett door is opened, and I think it's going to be a joyful time. I'm excited to watch you. Thank you. I'm going to get your jersey in my studio. All right, nice. Will you sign in? Do I have to pay for it? No, no, it's going to be one of them fake ones. Oh, all right, perfect, man. Good. NFLPA, give me some of that. Now we're talking. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm excited to watch you play. Thank you. I'm excited. I feel like we've answered a lot of questions today. We, got, we answered a bunch. Anything we didn't clear up? Since I haven't tweeted in a while, i got a question for you. Yeah. If you can classify something as nothing, is nothing something. <laughs> That's something. Ladies and gentlemen, the starting quarterback of the Indianapolis Colts, a man who's a dear friend of Bill Parcells, Third round draft pick, 
to the dynasty of the New England Patriots, there's no blueprint for the situation you're currently in right now. None. I looked for it. Didn't find it. How am I supposed to handle a once-in-a-generation quarterback retiring two weeks before the season and me becoming a starter? I think the world will be excited to watch how you handle it. You're blazing a trail right now, man. Appreciate it. You're going to do great. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Jacoby Brissett. I'd clap for you, too. You gave a great interview. I'm clapping for you. I'm clapping for you. Good shorts, dude. What is your, do you have good swagger travel? Conti. Do you dress well? Conti comes to me for, for advice. Yeah. Well, Conti needs, Conti's got 45 kids at this point, isn't he? Well, I have two, but yeah, it feels like uh, you, you just, you just said you need your suits, so. Yeah. Are you a suit guy, suit? Uh, sometimes, I'm not really like a button up, like, like yeah. that type, yeah, I, I like t-shirts and yeah, I wear a blazer if I'm trying to like, look a little cute. Do you say cute? So, we'll work on the phrasing. <laughs> <laughs> I wore this strictly because you're a starting quarterback, so I had to show a little respect, you know? I had to dress you're up. You're trying to show me up with a muscle. By the way, I'm on all types of shit. You'll be able to get on this when you retire. It's feeling pretty good, man. I don't think it's working that well. Just started. Today? <laughs> Two days ago. All right, well. Check me in a month, bro. I got you. I'm going to show up on the sideline of a game. And you're going to see Brock Lesnar stand on Hopefully the side. Hopefully they spell your name right this time. You saw that? Yeah. That was I, tough, wasn't it? Time. I've got my name spelled wrong a lot of times, so sorry. Yeah, everybody's saying brisket. 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 I don't like it. Yeah. It is what it is. QB1. That's all they need to know. That's it. Jacoby Brissett. Appreciate Thank you, you, man. Shout out to Jacoby. He's a rich man. Moments after speaking to me there, he signed a contract, and when he put his name down on that piece of paper, he was handed 20 million American <laughs> dollars. That's a fact. Whoa. He didn't say a single thing about it there. Even when we talked about the Hoyer contract, mm -hmm. he concurred, great money for Hoyer. Great contract. Good for Hoyer. Three years, 12 million, 9 million guaranteed. We're all happy for Hoyer. All have. He said he wasn't in the Wolf Pack. Said he wasn't officially in the Wolf. Hoyer wasn't officially in the Wolf Pack. Just because you're in the room, that the Wolf Pack was once in, you're not in the Wolf Pack. Said Hoyer wasn't in there. Hoyer was a good guy. Happy for Hoyer with his contract. He said it. Mm -hmm. He said it in there. Genuinely happy for him. Boom. An hour later, he signs for thirty fucking million dollars. <laughs> he could have given us a heads up. Could have. Couldn't he? Uh huh. Mm -hmm. But he kept his mouth shut, and that's why he's going to be a good quarterback for the Indianapolis mm -hmm. Colts. He was able to disguise that. You know how excited he had to be talking to me right there? He had to be antsy. Couldn't even imagine. Oh, my God. His agent probably texted him in the morning like, hey, heads up. <laughs> I think we're near 20 million guaranteed. Signing most, maybe 30 million. And he's responding in a text. Are you serious? <laughs> yep. Because Andrew Luck retired out of nowhere. You're signing your name for probably 20. Uh, we're going to try to get $25 million. Oh, my God. Yeah, we're real close, Jacoby. Okay, I won't say anything till it's fun. All right. Uh, Jacoby, you must do a 25-minute sit-down interview with Pat. Think about what was going on in the back of Jacoby Brissett's head there, the entire time talking. Just celebrating the entire right. time. Oh, my God. <laughs> I can't imagine. It never even occurred to me that they would want to do that because they had no obligation to do so. What, yeah. I just assume you always just try to save money. Well, they may be actually saving money. Say he fucking balls out this year. They had to do this mm -hmm. to do this. To lock him down. You know, it's a great app. <laughs> that was a rough, abrupt... <laughs> entrance into the conversation i interrupt this conversation now now we're talking. to tell you about a great app for football season oh, oh. yeah the the action network app you ever heard of it oh love i have it. heard of it i love it not only can you track bets that you put in wherever you like and there's green dots there's red dots to tell you how your bets are doing because the thing is when you start placing these bets and people are going to learn so this, many now that your sports gambling is becoming much more prevalent mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. what you're going to learn is what i learned is like you're going to place bets and you're going to forget exactly what the bet yes. is oh yeah and that's where the action network really comes in handy i used to write them down in a little black book i didn't have girls phone numbers i just had my bets in it that a boy real italian of you. and now I just, I just open up the Action Network app, and it tells me how all my bets are doing. Mm -hmm. Not only does it have that, it has tons and tons of information and articles on who to bet, where the line's going, where the money's at, where the sharks are at, mm -hmm. over-unders, everything. Because with the sharks, 
you got to know where the sharks are because if not, you'll get bit. Mm-hmm. Dun, 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 Ride that shark wave. Damn straight. And now dun, 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 dun. they have all new brand new pick them contests. That's Mario. <laughs> the action team just launched an NFL week one pick and pull that anyone can join for a chance to win $2,000. What? Wow. $2,000. NFL not- week one pick them. $2,000? Nothing to sneeze at. <laughs> Nothing to sneeze at. Think you've been sneezing a lot? <laughs> yeah, I know. I just got my picks in. You download the app and get yours in there before Thursday, you get a chance to win $2,000. Why wouldn't you try? Why, Why wouldn't, wouldn't you try? try? Why wouldn't you? It's two grand. Listen, all you do is download the app now and join our week one NFL pick and pull for win $2,000. GetAction.app slash Pat. That's GetAction.app slash Pat. Shout out to them, by the way. A lot of good intel. A lot, lot of, of intel. A lot of good intel. I actually read it going into games that I analyze on ESPN because of all the good intel. I like to know where the money's at. Mm-hmm. Who's doing what? What should I expect in this game? Should I really look into the quarterback? Is this going to be a high score? Or is it, are we going to be ground and pine? <laughs> <laughs> Action Network is a place. That's smart. For yeah. smart betters. Mm-hmm. The Action Network is a place for somebody that has $0 that wants to win $2,000. Mm-hmm. The Action Network is the place for you. ActionNetwork.com. Get action.app slash Pat. Yikes. Back to the show. <laughs> I texted Chris Ballard after the announcement of the signing game. Okay. Because we talked before the interview that it's going to be interesting that Hoyer's making more money than Jacoby, and Jacoby's supposed to be the guy. Right. That's a weird thing. Although money is not talked about in the locker room, that's why whenever Abram was talking about Derek Carr's money, it was kind of awkward. <laughs> you don't really talk about other guys' money. It's not the way you handle business. Sure. But whenever you know the guy behind you that was just signed is making more money than you and you've been handed this, you're not handed. Yeah, I mean, it was a situation he's been gifted here. That's mm-hmm. not normal. It's kind of an interesting thing. Although I think Jacoby, I mean, what do we know of him? I mean, he knew, he kept that secret from me the entire conversation. Yeah. <laughs> but I think Jacoby, the way he is, he would have handled it professionally because sure. he's just a cool dude. But still, it's a little weird. Uh-huh. So, boom, they sign him for this money after the Hoyer thing. Smart move by Ballard. Just to let everybody know this is our guy. This is the guy. Mm -hmm. So I texted him, congrats. Incredible bounce back from a wild situation, which it is. Mm -hmm. Now they have Jacoby Brissett and Hoyer in the QB room. That's a great QB room all of a sudden. And if Jacoby can show up and show out, which I think he might be able to do this opportunity, I mean, all of a sudden, this is a bargain, this deal that they just got. Mm -hmm. He responds with, now we have to go win. Take care of Jacoby. Let's the team know that he is the guy. It's really not that hard, Pat. Take care of the players, and they will play their ass off. That's what Chris Bowers said. He gets it. Mm-hmm. He does there get it. Go. Because just what you said there, mm-hmm. they could have sat on this for another year, see, maybe even a couple weeks. Like, hey, we'll let him play for eight weeks here, see if he's worth shit, and then we'll offer him an extension. But instead, Bowers said, hey, you've done enough here with us the last mm-hmm. couple of years. You came in in a bad situation a couple of years ago when Andrew Luck sat out an entire year. Same sort of scenario where everybody thought Luck was going to play. He didn't play. You're kind of thrown in there. You did well. You've been a great teammate the last couple of years. Now, hey, now we go. They've done everything to put him in a spot to succeed. Yes. Now we yeah, go. Exactly. I love it. I mean, it does immediately say, hey, we think of him as a starter and quarterback in the NFL. Yep. So we're going to pay him a quarterback. And they've got the money to spend. They still have yeah, something have over like $100 million in cap space. Okay, so team. since Luck didn't return the money, do they still get to use that? <laughs> Plus, it's I'm joking. It's good, for, it's good for the team and the player because it's only two years. So if it doesn't uh-huh. work out. And if he balls, move on. there's if another it, 100 it, million coming. Correct. In two years for him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I like it a lot. This Andrew Luck situation, we obviously weren't doing the show. We took a couple weeks off. Need to build a studio. This Andrew Luck situation is one that is is wild. And I've talked everywhere about it. I mean, Andrew Luck retiring was good business for us. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I was on a lot of television. I had a lot of questions being asked because I was in a similar situation, but nowhere really near similar situation. <laughs> he's walking away from like uh, 60 million, although he's getting it still. Yeah. I walked away from six ish million, just one tenth of it. I thought about it for like a year. He thought about it for like two weeks. You know what I mean? So it's a very different situation, but I think everybody, including Jacoby, what he said in that interview was everybody's happy that Andrew Luck's going to find his happiness, right? Because I think inside the locker room, we all see each other as humans. You know, everybody shits the same. Yeah. Everybody sits down uncomfortably, mm-hmm. utilizes whatever shitty toilet paper is next to him, mm-hmm. and has to shit. Agreed. That's the most humble position a human can be in. Mm-hmm. No matter what your profession is, everybody shits the same. And I think that is something in a locker room you feel. So whenever that human feels happiness, you can't help but be like, you know what? 
happy for that guy. But I do think there was a lot of people that were not a, not happy about the timing of the whole thing. I assume there's more people that weren't happy about the timing of the thing than let out. Uh, that's not from an insider information. That's just if I was in a locker room, uh-huh. I'd be like, well, God damn it. But I'd also have faith in Jacoby. I am happy Andrew Luck's doing his thing, but I think the Colts are in a good spot. I really do. And I think Jacoby's going to take care of it. With that being said, the Houston Texans got much better at football yes, this past did. weekend. Mm-hmm. Much better. Much better at football. Hey, hey, the game of football, the Houston Texans got much better at the game the of football. The tackle that they got rid of uh, gave up the most sacks in the NFL last year. The tackle that they got, apparently one of the best pass blockers in the NFL. Best lungs in the history of mankind. <laughs> <laughs> Haven't heard a single thing about him since that day where the infamous gas mask made an appearance, which is good for an offensive lineman, by the way. He is a freak athlete, I'd assume. I mean, anybody can hit a gas mask and not cough. Yes. Now, granted, he didn't clear it, which I watched the tape back. (laughs) Whenever he got traded, I watched the tape back. He did not clear (laughs) the bong that was attached to the gas mask. So, I mean, I guess we can knock points for that. But still the ability to live in a mask that is just circulating smoke and not cough one time goes to your lung strength. Tenfold. <laughs> right? Mm-hmm. Sure. Yeah. Them getting better at tackle to protect Deshaun Watson, which I forget who mentioned it earlier. I think Diggs mentioned it earlier. Bill O'Brien saw Andrew Luck retire after seven years because he got his ass kicked early on in his career. Bill O'Brien might have seen that and said, hey, Deshaun Watson has gotten his ass kicked. Uh-huh. We got to do something. Bang, give me the gas mask guy. <laughs> what else do we want? Ah, we get another wide receiver, too, to go yep. opposite Nuke, a guy that... You know, Miami was a little up in the air about to play eight straight Jay-Z songs in spite of him. <laughs> well, we can take him, and then we'll send back how many? First round or second round? Who gives a fuck? I'm probably not going to be here if we lose this year anyways. <laughs> we'll give away every pick from next year if we have to. I think the Houston Texans got better at football, even though they got rid of Clowney. But you don't need Clowney if you don't have a QB1 in there that can potentially make plays yeah. like Andrew Luck. Now, granted, will Nick Foles get hot? Possibly. Is Mariota going to break out this year? Maybe. Is Jacoby Brissett the next Andrew Luck? Possibly. But Bill O'Brien was like, fuck it. Don't need Clowney. We got J.J. Watt. Let's get us a left tackle. It's a very interesting division. It is, isn't it? Because Like the- Jacksonville two years ago was 11-5. Jacksonville Jaguars. With Blake Bortles as their quarterback? Jacksonville Jaguars cut Matt Overton, though. Let's remember that. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to hurt. That's it's a shame. It is a shame. <laughs> Can't just cut Matt Overton and expect to have a winning football team. <laughs> Matt Overton, long snapper for the Colts, long time. Went down to Jacksonville, offered to buy a bunch of tickets for Riley Children's Hospital for the people that are upset about Andrew Luck retiring. Just got fired. Don't know how he's going to pay for the tickets. Now. <laughs> but Matt Overton, <laughs> Matt Overton, I liked Matt Overton being on the Jaguars. I liked him still having a job. I hope he continues to do so. But you don't cut Matt Overton and still win games. I know. I agree. It's I like s- they're not taking this season seriously. Yeah. Todd and I are super high on Fournette. Yes. He went away. Somewhere in like South Dakota, North Dakota, somewhere, stayed in a hotel for four months, lost twenty pounds, rededicated himself to football. Did a did a friend cleansing where he got rid of all the friends. Is this were, serious? Yes, yes, yes. Oh, he's gonna fucking dominate. That's what I That's what said. I'm saying. I didn't know this was real. Yeah. yeah. He went into the woods like Kanye. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now Kanye came out with that shit Jesus. Yeah. So hopefully for now comes out the other way. Our whole building just that sounds up. like something just blow up. So that was someone's base. Yeah, That's how. Hey, hey, somebody's got some boom booms in the trunk. <laughs> I don't know if people still put boom booms in the trunk. I like Fournette, though, disappearing, going into the woods. He, he deleted friends in real life, not just yeah. on Facebook. Yeah. I like that. It's a good step, right? Foles. I mean, we've seen Foles. Big Dick Nick is big play Nick, big time Nick as well, if he can get hot. Mm-hmm. Tom Coughlin's running the show over there. Let's assume he got good bodies in there. The Jaguars could be very good, and nobody's talking about no that. No one. Nobody's talking about the Jaguars. Everybody's talking about the Texans now, strictly because of these trades. Oh, the Texans lost the trade. The Texans did this. Oh, they're going to win this. Do, 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 do. Which is all possibly true. I all think of it. the Jaguars scare me as much as anybody. Oh, the Jacksonville Jaguars. Because their defense is at such an elite level. They can be, yeah. That and then now you got Nick Foles, too. Nick Foles, nobody talking about him. Nobody. Just come he out likes to ball. be there, right? Yeah. Hey, real quick, where though. where he lives. Real quick, though. Their mascot, too. Legit. Pretty good? Jaguars mascot is the truth. Dude, one bungee jumping off the top of the stadium every single game we played there. It's <laughs> pretty serious. serious. <laughs> like, like, countdown. Like, oh. The kickoff is a 10, 9, 8. And all of a sudden, they're like, what's... 
Everybody look up in the sky. <laughs> <laughs> I think his name is Jax, I'd assume. I don't know if that's accurate or not. It like, should look be. At, look at Jax. And you look up there, and this son of a bitch is standing on top of the stadium like this. <laughs> Like up in the nose, above the nosebleeds. He's standing above the nosebleeds, and all of a sudden he just like fucking free fall jump, like a spin, and then he's just bungee jumping all the way through the stadium, and then they drop him all the way down to midfield, and he has like the ball. That's awesome. <laughs> That's before every game. They got the pools going, they got the whole thing, the convoys. Wow. Yeah. I didn't know that. Jacksonville is ready to erupt. Like that that place is ready to explode. From the mascot being electric to the pool parties <laughs> happening during the game to Mr. Khan having that yacht with a yoga mat inside of it. That place is ready to blow up. I like Jacksonville. I like Duval. They they sent us a shirt last year. Yeah, they did. Mm-hmm. I like that team. I still like the Colts a lot. Yeah, I do too. I but think we're fine. Nobody's talking about Jacksonville. I like the Texans. And I, I people that are saying Houston Texans lost that trade, by the way. Wrong. Oh, they gave up so much. Okay, what if that pick is uh, some fuck anybody? Trent mm-hmm. Richardson. Ooh. Yeah. You know what I mean? I it's think no draft, picks, right? draft picks nowadays are even more of a question. I they are. They put too much I'll gladly pay you, pay you tomorrow for a cheeseburger today. Excuse me? Amen, Dicks. <laughs> the other thing with that, too, is Tunsil's going to need paid, right? So you bring in a left tackle, which everyone in the league is looking for, a premier left tackle. You ship out Clowney because you already have one of the best pass rushers in the league. You didn't want to pay Clowney. You're going to take that money that you could have given to Clowney. You're going to give it to the left tackle. Very true. Well, and also, the Dolphins got rid of the left tackle because they got a lefty coming. Yeah. Tua is a lefty. Don't need a stud left tackle. <laughs> need the right tackle. Great point. You know Great what I mean? Point. You just need a right tackle back Because uh, Lawrence... <laughs> Thomas is coming off the right side. <laughs> if uh, oh, what's his face is a lefty instead of righty. Fleisman. Yeah, that's when the left tackle became the position, right? Whenever what's his face. Fleisman. Yeah. Lawrence. Lawrence. What's Lawrence his face? Taylor. Lawrence Taylor. Taylor yeah. yeah, that one. Mm-hmm. Who's Lawrence Thomas? Is that a human? <laughs> I think he's a judge or something. Was he the judge? <laughs> 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 who was the Thomas who played for the Bills? The uh, linebacker. Bruce. Thurman? Bruce. He fucking. No, Nick just. Bruce Smith. Bruce Nick Smith. tried to Smith. slander Thurman this. Thomas. Thurman Thomas, thank you. Hey, hold on, though. Yeah, that was fucked up. Nick tried to slander. What do you mean I tried Bruce to slander? Smith. This video from 4,000 years ago, we just watched the Chappelle special <laughs> where he talks great, about- Great, by the way. Great. Great special. Sam it's like he I, went into my brain and pulled everything out. Hey, Sam and I watched that. <laughs> Did this you weekend. just take credit for Dave Chappelle? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Dave Chappelle. And Dave Chappelle went right into Diggs' brain and did uh, probably the most brilliant hour long sit-up set in history. But yeah, that's what comedians do, by the way, Dicks. That's what comedians do. Um, I wouldn't know. Sam and I watched uh, the Chappelle special this weekend. You guys watched it last week. Mm-hmm. I'll tell you what, man. I don't want to do stand up anymore. I know. That's why I was told Nick. I'm like, I'm going to feel bad about myself. And this is like, sometimes that happens when something's really good. This one just destroyed me. I'm not going to I laughed so up. hard. I, oh, I literally almost shit myself. <laughs> I farted real loud. And I laughed. <laughs> And I was like, uh, I probably dude. I am not going to do stand up anymore. I I've decided I'm 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 retiring for stand up. I I can I guarantee you this. I could never do that. I'm so. sorry, Iowa, Detroit, <laughs> In Minnesota. And Minnesota. I was supposed to reschedule, which we were planning on doing with our upcoming fall schedule. Mm-hmm. Mondays I'm in New York for Get Up. Then Thursday night football is somewhere, and then the DAZN show is every day. I was going to have a busy schedule, but we're going to fit in on Tuesday nights, which is the only open night, really, I have. Those three shows, I'm never getting on a stage again. I'm so sorry. Yeah. Did Chappelle did that to me. <laughs> Demoralized me. Oh, my uh, God. I, mean, I this is, He's the best. I got to take a good 10 years to write something good. I got to take 10 years of writing to put something together that is even worth a fuck after <laughs> that. There's people that hated that. Oh, well, those are the people that hate everything. Yeah, but they're jokes. Yeah. They're like, hey, these are jokes. Like, and I think we're getting back to a stage, by the way, where people can joke. I think we are. Yeah, I think it's got to be getting better. We're kind of going, we went yeah. through a cycle where everybody kind of hated everything, and then now we're kind of getting back to it, which I'm kind of happy about. Granted, there are some things in there that are probably very offensive to sure. a lot of people, but it's Dave Chappelle. Like, that's what Dave Chappelle is. Yeah, it's, it's not a political debate. Yeah. It's not meant to be serious. Could be, though, by the way. By the way, if Dave Chappelle went into a political debate, <laughs> I'm <laughs> betting everything I got that he's winning. Made a lot of good points. And well, just just like he said, you clicked on my face. You wanted to watch yeah. this. You clicked on my face. He was so adamant about that. That's just what's trendy now, though. 
just anytime something, it, it, even if it's not that great, to just if there's an, uh, an opposition that really likes it, there's always going to be the people then just come out and just bury it for no reason. Well, you make a lot of money doing that, I think, yeah. these days. A lot of the uh, antagonist mm-hmm. is a vital role in the society that we live in now yeah. because without it, there's no conversation. Right. So I understand that, but boy, some people say some dumb shit. That's gonna be that's what's gonna be hard for me with the ZSPN thing with yeah. Get Up. Yeah. It's just gonna be hard just to not look somebody right in their face and be like, "You don't mean that." <laughs> I, I, think, I, I think I might hey, do that. I think it would fucking crush it. Oh, did. please yeah. do it. Come on, you don't really fucking mean oh, that. Come on. Oh, are you the antagonist on this segment? Oh, <laughs> oh okay. you're the guy hired to say that dumb makes sense, things. Because I knew there's oh, no way you can really feel that. There's way. no way you feel that way. There's no way you feel that way. <laughs> Let's go through this. You were born where? Raised where? Did what? And you believe that? <laughs> No way. <laughs> there is no chance. So that's going to be tough. But um, Chappelle had a joke about how basically people are looking for anything to bury people nowadays. He said it's celebrity hunting season, even if it's 20 years ago. Bruce Smith did a TV <laughs> interview probably 40 years ago, if <laughs> I had like, to guess. I, I don't know the exact date, but it seemed as if it was potentially 60 years ago. Nick found it on the internet this morning and put it out there. And it was Bruce Smith blackout drunk on television <laughs> where he falls asleep mid-interview. And Nick, you didn't feel bad at all about it. It's, he's lived a long, successful life. I mean, things happen in that time, and it's going to get brought back up. I didn't put it out there to start. You already had 100 retweets when I found it. So it, it was out there. not. When you sent it to our group, it had like 34 retweets or something. <laughs> it was out there. Yeah, but 34 and 100 retweets, a lot different animal there. But, yeah. but I'm just worried about Bruce Smith having to come out and apologize for being blacked out on TV. I'm sorry. He already did. He already said he blamed it on the lights. He said the lights were too bright. Oh, yeah, that can't happen. <laughs> <laughs> you can get intoxicated by the lights. They said he had the flu. He was a little dehydrated. The lights were too hot. Uh, there's a lot of things. Yeah, you said he was drunk, though, I believe. That's what the original tweet said, so I went with it. Mm. Anyways. Bruce Smith. Poor. Seems like he would own that, though. I mean, he was a bad motherfucker. Like, <laughs> He got paid by the Redskins, didn't he, when he left the Bills and didn't do much? I'm not sure. I don't know the Bruce Smith story. All I know is he didn't deserve what Nick did. (laughs) Um, Andrew Luck retired. Yes. Which is why we talked to Jacoby. Mm -hmm. I've I've stated how I felt on every other show except for this one. 100th episode, have to talk about it. Andrew Luck retired out of nowhere. Happy for him. Oh, yeah. (laughs) That's it. That's all I got. It's touching. Thank you. Problem. I feel like sure, I, sure. You're not happy for him. No, no. I mean, yeah, sure. Whatever. I don't give a fuck. Um, <laughs> wow. Wow. Thanks. This no, guy. No, that, I mean about that part. Yeah, but sure, sure sounds like sure sounds like you're not happy that the guy found his potential happiness. Honestly, yeah. you should be happy for a guy finding his happiness. The internet told you you should be happy. Well, whether Andy, How sick are whether, you? Whether Drew is happy or not doesn't affect my life at all. But for the Colts fans, yeah, I feel like. Could have probably done it, you know, a few months earlier. I agree, and I don't think he knew his ankle injury was going to be as bad. A lot of talk was about the Colts fans booing him, and Colts fans were getting booed, or not booed, but ruined by everybody. Mm-hmm. Talking about how disgusting. It was a bad look. The shot, Indianapolis got a bad shot. People were yeah. like, Indianapolis, second-rate hick city. It's like, yo, chill the fuck yeah. out. Yeah. Hey, it's a very clean city. Mm-hmm. Very small. There are farms everywhere. I mean, yeah. let's not get mistaken here. But good, honest people. I mean, it's a most nice for the city. Most part. Who's your hospitality? The place is a good place. Yeah. I mean, we got a couple methadone clinics, but for the most part. Yeah, we, got, we got people. our drugs here and yeah. there. Yeah, I mean, people do what they need to do. But Indianapolis is getting buried because probably 300 people booed that were mm. drunk at yeah. a game at the end of a preseason game. Everybody's burying them. And they should, by the way. It was a regrettable decision. You sure. shouldn't boo a guy, especially who's been through as much as Andrew has been through for mm-hmm. the city. Shouldn't boo him. Right. Regrettable. Bad decision. Bad look. But let's not fucking bury an entire city because there's a couple of drunk people at a preseason game who stayed for all four quarters. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Who stays for all four quarters? Those are the diehards. Diehards. If this was to happen in any other city, I couldn't even fathom yep. it. Beers, if, beers fly. Oh, oh my yeah. God. If Ben did this in Pittsburgh, it's... especially what happened two years ago mm-hmm. with Andrew, and not, they said he was coming back, said he was coming back, said he was coming back. Jacoby mm-hmm. played. He didn't come back ever. Then he sat out, went to another country, the whole thing. And then last year, he did very good again. And everybody's like, all right, our team is back, our team's back. And then two weeks before the season, the same thing happens again, where they're being told that he's coming back, he's coming back. If Ben Roethlisberger would have done this in house would have been burnt to the ground. Dead. And every, you got people on Twitter just pandering like, oh, 
classless. <laughs> classless. It's, it's, I'll, I'll it, it's something we've people. never seen before. 2019, Ever. some guy tweeted out that a guy on the sidelines had retired. Oh, yeah. Not a guy. A once in a generation guy. quarterback is just, hey, by the way, done. And there's nothing like, I, I understand like that 300 people or whatever just were so in shock. I mean, like, because of the hey, timing. Not a loud stadium, it, by the way. Impressive that it made it. It's the loudest it's been in a while. <laughs> <laughs> but it, he, Andrew Luck, can't, he tried to control the narrative. He was going to schedule a press conference yeah. on that. But he's like you said, in this day, I mean, Schefter's got there's little just, snitches in there. There's, there's, there's yeah. nothing you can compare it to. It's never happened before. By the way, and there's nothing Schefter can do. No, no, he's right. just, he has to do it. Biggest right? story in the NFL. Yeah. A lot of people wanted to bash Schefter, which I can get it because he was the messenger. So you would be mad at him. Schefter <laughs> makes it. God bless your soul. Thank Diggs. you. Diggs in a bad spot. <laughs> Diggs has uh, poten- good. potentially the AIDS. Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> Schefter gets the biggest story in the NFL. Sitting there with it. Well, what do we do? What am I supposed to do? Watching the game. Probably had it for what, a half? He probably got it in the first quarter no or something way. like that. No way. I think he probably got it first quarter. <laughs> you think quarter. he sat on it? I think he Because he had to... Because you have to... In his particular profession, the vet, the- you have to, yeah, you get information and you have to pick it apart and find out if it's real or not. So I think he sat on it for a little bit. And then when that third quarter happened, he was like, yep, fuck it. Got to go. <laughs> yeah. Hey, we got to go right now. Somebody else might get this who isn't Ian Rappaport uh, or Florio or any of these people have to get it. I have to let it out. So there's nothing Schefter can do. But just like Jacoby said, whenever he learned that the tweet was out on the sideline from Andrew, that face he made. Like, what a wild scene. So you expect a couple drunk Indiana Hoosiers out there. Right. Live and die with what the horseshoe. The couldn't get tickets. <laughs> couldn't get tickets to a real game. Bought these ones outside. <laughs> Brought the whole family. What do we got? $45 Bud Lights in here? I'm going to have 10 of them. <laughs> I, and they just, the natural reaction was to lose their mind. Yeah. But if that was to happen in any other city, any yeah. other city, even Green Bay, I think. Oh, yeah, for yeah. sure. Anywhere. Like the most wholesome city, but I think there would be quite a reaction. That's so, one of like, my least you, favorite things in the world is taking a section of fans and be like, oh, this all the fan base is so classless. Yeah, like we, the Eagles fans. We well, know they're oh classless. Oh, God, they would have. I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, we were at the bar. batteries at Santa. <laughs> a couple of us were at the bar, and we obviously got the news first because we're always on our phones and stuff like that. And I started looking around the bar, like expecting like drinks and shit to be flying, and like no one knew yet. So I took it upon myself, myself to walk around the bar, and I walked up to a couple of Colts fans who like were happy and smiling. And Luck like jerseys that. on. Yep. Oh yeah. Just spent two fifty on this. <laughs> and I walked up. I said, "You don't know, do you?" And they were like, "No, what?" And I was like, "Oh, you don't know." And I just showed them the the news on the phone, and they just their heads just sunk into their chest. What a glorifying feeling that was. <laughs> He said, I You're wish a I terrible guy. <laughs> the words. I wish You're I a could terrible guy. Get on a PA at this bar right yeah. now and <laughs> shout it. I wanted to step on. I wanted to get on top of the bar, grab the fucking house mm. mic, and just let everyone know. Attention, Why? Indianapolis. Attention. <laughs> uh, just to see. That guy that got drafted with the number one overall pick uh, that you guys sucked for the year before, you cut Peyton Manning for. The guy you guys paid $140 million to didn't play a couple years ago. You guys were told he was going to play, and then last year he played. That guy, you know what I'm talking about? Neckbeard? Oh, Done. Yeah. <laughs> Forever. God. And then just drop the mic and walk yeah. out. Uh, watch the whole place just burn. <laughs> Fuck that guy. <laughs> hey, I thought Shafter got tweeted. I, I thought somebody broke hacked. into his account. Yeah. I did. I thought somebody hacked into his account. I honestly thought somebody was trolling. Because that's something that you would do yeah. if mm-hmm. you got into Shafter's account. By the way, Jack Dorsey got hacked. Yeah. That's like anybody can get it. You know what I mean? He's the CEO of Twitter. Fucking Twitter. Yes. And he gets hacked. Yeah. And you know what? I've decided when I'm changing my password, I don't need you judging me on if my password's strong or weak or not. Because the people that are telling me if it's strong or weak just got their fucking shit hacked. <laughs> maybe what you think is weak is actually strong. Yeah, maybe your password's weak. Hey, maybe maybe Pat1234 is a strong one. I would say Jax is probably Twitter one. Yeah. yeah. No, I bet you his is one of those like X4, N, S, J. Yeah. Impossible to remember Can't do ones that. where you're only banking on your phone to remember. And if your phone gets hacked, you're oh. done for anyways. Yeah. yeah. Like, how is that the suggested That's one? Terrible. 
They, you show up like, would you like to create your own password or <laughs> do you want an old Mr. iPhone to create one for you? That's what they ask you. And I'm always like, I'll create my own. Get the fuck out of here. And then I tweet it. I, I fill it in. And they're like, weak. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> weak? I can't even remember that. How is yeah. that weak? Oh, you need like 16 different capitalized letters. It's like, get the fuck. The facial recognition thing is all I use now. Mm-hmm. And it's either that or I have my own. I have like five passwords right now bouncing around different uh-huh. places and I change them monthly. I used to be a stick with it until the wheels fall off guy. And I used to have to think back to a, whatever age I was whenever I created set account in what era of password was I in? <laughs> okay. So I created this when my rookie year, <laughs> probably car bomb six. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? It was a big car bomb. Right? Yeah. I think I was doing a lot of car bombs. All right. Let's start. Get that. But now I change them so rapidly and I don't think it matters. I think if they want to hack you, they're going to hack yes. you. I, That's what I think. I don't think learning the password is their... Th- I yeah. think they can get around the password. Oh, yeah. yeah. Fuck so, your two-step verification, too. I'm not getting the code texted to me <laughs> every time I try to log in my life. Yeah, I'm sure Jack had the three-step yeah. verification. Sure. Part hey, four. J- hey, Jack, uh, your shit's on right now. <laughs> I'm meeting with another dumbass. <laughs> those recommended passwords, they just get them off the back of routers. They don't come up with those on their own. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> and I don't, I don't think the password matters. It's not like hackers are just in there like, all right, let's guess. Right. Diggs, who is he? He's Italian. <laughs> you think there's a hacker like sitting at home? Like, Anthony DeGilio. Check his Facebook. <laughs> uh, what photos does he have? Well, he has the big beard. Okay, big beard four. <laughs> We're nope. in. That's not it. Yeah, it's not like they're doing that. I think they're just completely by. I don't think the password matters no, at all, no. except for to your friends. Like, so your friends don't yes. hack it, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think hackers are just getting in no matter what. They, it does not matter what you put in there. I agree. If hackers they want are you, getting, they're going to get you. If they want it, it's like cancer. I think yeah. cancer, I think it's cancer, gonna, if it wants it, yep. it's yeah. going to get it. Like, mm-hmm. I, you, you hear those stories. Those That's people, my password, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> if you want it, you're going to get it? No, cancer. Because <laughs> you hear stories about these 100-year-old people that smoked pack cigarettes a day. Yeah. It's like, well, how the fuck? I was told I smoked pack cigarettes I'm dying tomorrow. Mm-hmm. And there's people like, oh, I eat bacon every day of my life. It's like, well, I was told if I had a ba- piece of bacon mm-hmm. once a week, I'm going to have clogged arteries. I think everything's just bullshit. I, think I every- do too. I think everything's bullshit. Absolutely. And it's probably not the right way to think. <laughs> <laughs> but but really- you, do, you hear like these marathon runners and stuff dropping dead at like 37. Well, it's because we're running like, fucking 26 uh, miles dude, at a time. This, this celebrity uh, health. Yeah, they shouldn't run that. <laughs> so this celebrity fitness coach or something like that. Uh-huh. He was on. He has a commercial because he had a heart attack. Yeah, this celebrity healthy guy. He's mm-hmm. like a celebrity healthy guy. Had a heart attack. Almost died. In his thing was like, "Hi, I'm a celebrity fitness coach." Blah 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 blah. And it, like they start playing that soft music that they play behind the nightmare medicine. You know, mm-hmm. like uh, when I had my heart attack, the only thing that helped me. I'm like. If this fucking guy's having heart attacks, <laughs> this guy who's literally known for being in good shape, right. this guy is known for being fit, uh, is having a heart attack. I got no shot. I got absolutely no shot. I'm gonna have a heart attack. I'm gonna have cancer. I'm gonna have everything. And I honestly think it's all just roll of the dice, just like the hackers. I think everything's just roll of the dice. You're either gonna get it or you're not. Could have. Hey, you're gonna get got. You got to get yours for your- more than you get got yeah. though. Bingo. Marshawn Lynch coming on the show Thursday. <laughs> oh. <laughs> By the way, <laughs> um, what else happened? Anything big? Uh, LeSean McCoy's going to the Chiefs. Chiefs about to win a Super Bowl all of a sudden. Whoa. Now, granted, to do that, you got to beat the Colts and the Patriots. So that kind of goes against everything I'm stating. But the Chiefs got better <laughs> at football because LeSean McCoy is an incredible football player. And his him taking a $3 million salary, $4 million salary is very much fucking Ezekiel Elliott. But LeSean McCoy did get cut. Ezekiel Elliott never did. Uh-huh. I think LeSean McCoy has got a lot left in the tank. I think with Tyreek Hill, Travis Kelsey, and all the weapons they have, Patrick Mahomes being able to do no look shit. How's it going? I like ketchup. <laughs> but the um, I think that I think that opens up the box for LeSean McCoy. Yep. And I think LeSean McCoy is about to have a massive year. They're gonna dump him so many screens. Uh, and, so and many. The first three people are gonna miss. So you got all these people covering all these electric athletes that they have going out. Okay, I'm going to drop into coverage here. And then all of a sudden, when a dump happens, you have to break on the ball. So these people have to leave their man and break on the ball. LaShawn McCoy has made a career off of people breaking on the ball. He's so good at it. And he's just, whoop, see you later. I need to drop in a couple Berman. Whoop. Oh, please. <laughs> Thursday night football. Please do. I should do that, huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah. little homage to him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I love it. That was a pretty good one there. I didn't know if I had it or not. You did. Right was good. Got it. I, it's got to go from the gut. If I do yeah. it from the throat, I'll lose it because you know what mm-hmm. I mean. Right. Yep. But I got to go. Whoop! 
Oh, there it is. We it's found it, boys. Yeah. Hey. It's a good one. Hey, hey. There we go. Chiefs are going to be very good, though. Happy for them. Very happy for the Chiefs. Good for Andy Reid. All Andy Reid's got to do is just have a little patience with the playbook. We all know Andy Reid's season. <laughs> this is the first, like, 11 weeks. He did good last year. He did do good last year. D Ford. Oh. Andy's not great at uh, just taking it easy on things. Hey, just, you know what? Oh. Maybe leave that cupcake there. You know what? Digs. I'm allowed to say that. I'm fat. <laughs> Oh, okay. <laughs> we don't accept you. I think it goes the other way. <laughs> Thanks, it, was, it was unbelievable. You just said that, buddy. We were talking about football here. We're trying to have a professional conversation. Well, things that in your professional life, you know, they, they leak over from your personal life. <laughs> what you do in the dark will come to the light. See? Wow. David Thornton told me that. He's director of player personnel for the Indianapolis Colts. And I don't know why he singled me out when he said that. <laughs> <laughs> Pat, you're right. You, I didn't mean that, though. So. Pat, what you doing in the dark? Oh, now you're apologizing? Look at you, Dix. Yeah. Hmm. It's regret season. <laughs> it's coughing like- season, by the way. Keep your head on a swivel. Foxy got wifed up. Ooh. Did you? Yeah, I did. Congrats, oh. Foxy. Foxy. Uh, Thank you. Hey, you know, there was a time during the show. The show's <laughs> 40 to 80-ish, maybe. I yeah, that know. sounds right. Where we wondered if Foxy was ever going to get out of the drought that he was in. Yeah, I remember that. You remember those days? Oh, you remember, remember that? Those days. I mean, a little like couple month, month drought, one month drought probably turned into a six month oh. drought, mm. which turned into a two year drought, which turned into. Yeah, that's how droughts happen. I'm a virgin. <laughs> no, I'm saying in your guys' head. Oh. This is what you guys did. <laughs> not in real life. Yeah, not in real life. Uh, I think your confidence just went up. I think That's so all too. it was. It was just a matter of confidence. Because the amount of you times up too quick. we talked about you potentially not having sex ever, you know, in your life. Uh-huh. Right. I think you built up a shield and you got like more confidence. You got hardened by it. And then whammy, find the girl of your dreams. Here we are. Locked <laughs> it down. I, I'm not going to give you guys a credit for this one. What are you talking about? I, I, yeah. I'm not going to give you guys credit for this are one. Are you kidding me? What? I don't deserve any credit for this thing. Uh, if I didn't put it out into the universe that you were still a virgin. At the age that you were, <laughs> none of this happened. I disagree with that. She doesn't even know that was a thing. Oh, she's not a fan of the show. No. Yikes. That's a good oh. thing to have. Oh, jeez. Dicks. <laughs> Mine's never You don't listened, feel like, so. though, your confidence level was raised by coming here and being around Pat and traveling and getting to experience oh, the experience. Oh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And then us get busting oh, your balls. Oh, big oh, picture. No, Fox has definitely picture. changed. We would break your butt. Oh, come oh. on. I didn't say it was for the bad. It's it for the good. Because we would break your we balls and then you started Foxy. breaking back. You got good at it. Yeah. I mean, that raises confidence. Yeah, look at it. <laughs> Let's look at this from a macro. You deserve to talk shit when you got We're going big picture of this whole thing. Absolutely. My confidence is a thousand percent grown and also i mean let's talk about it if it wasn't for this you don't even move to indy good point oh, i also have thought wow. about that very very todd, valid I, point. I think you deserve because todd wanted to hire you the most the first day mate. wow thank yeah. you Todd. Mm-hmm. appreciate that yeah like and there's a I lot think of things nick, i think nick was on your side i don't know about that that was me because i loved his wedding website nice <laughs> nice <laughs> i mean that but was yeah, I that mean, was from, i didn't know how to make a website <laughs> If you want to go big picture on the whole thing, uh-huh. he's got a website. A lie has changed. Like I got a good haircut now. You guys made me grow a beard. Yeah, yeah. A good. I mean, you look like ten times better. I with dress the beard. better. That I mean, picture you posted the other day. Exactly. That guy's a seven. Yeah. That- <laughs> Foxy with a beard. Yeah. Nine and a half. And that's a lot of people like, dude. The glow up is real. And I'm like, all it takes is a beard and a good haircut. Just dude. two things. So you're welcome. I think what we're yeah. trying to say is you're welcome. All right. Yeah. Thank you guys. Oh. We interrupt this conversation one more time for a reading by Zito. Thank you, Pat. No problem, bud. Let me ask you something. Go on. How much time do you spend in front of your digital screens? All the time. Huh. For me, I know I spend hours at a time looking at my screens. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. He does. <laughs> He didn't lie. <laughs> oh, there's two dashes in there. I don't know what to do there. I mean, just what a blatant disregard for anyone who's ever read anything. This guy. Just spitting in the face. Oh, my God. Between my phone work, bringing new sh- shows, binging new shows, <laughs> video games. Very close, though. I mean, bringing <laughs> and binging are damn near. One letter off. There was a smudge. I doubt it. <laughs> uh, scrolling right before bed. That's why I started wearing MVMTs. I ever scroll blue light filtering glasses. 
They're built to protect your eyes from blue light that's known to cause eye strain, discomfort, oh. and poor sleeping patterns. Mm. Uh, you know what? I thought about that. You're right. Yeah, me too. <laughs> well, you said it. Good point, Z. Here's some starters for you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. He hasn't read it a while. <laughs> Couple weeks off. Yeah. It's rusty. I'm going to talk about the known potential benefits of wearing blue light glasses. Okay. In whatever context feels most on brand and authentic for me. <laughs> <laughs> so you'll you'll stumble through it. <laughs> uh, it promotes sounder sleep, elevates mood, moods, lowers stress hormones. That's good. Improves focus and mental clarity. By the way, and, all these things are good. Oh yeah, and it sharpens vision. Oh. Nick, you've been using this. I love these days. things. I really do. Not only do they look cool, they actually work. My eyes feel better. Nick, Nick just popped off out of nowhere with these glasses, didn't he? Did. He? Oh, he did. All of a sudden, he was glasses guy. I'm like, you have bad eyes? No, great eyes. That's what you said. Even better now. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Strengthen. And you look cool. That's most important. And they, smart. They're good looking glasses that make your life better. Yeah. That is all you need to know. Zito, please struggle through the rest of this. Yep. I'm going to talk about the, the different styles of fashion frames we have. Okay, please They do. have. They don't look like the other computer glasses you see out there. That's true. They take MVMT's best-selling glasses frames and add blue light filtering lenses to them. So you don't have to sacrifice style for functionality. Big words. It's really true. Cool. Oh, yeah. It's true. Uh, pick from round frames, clear frames, colored frames, Etc. MVMT's <laughs> selection is always expanding with new traditional and fashion forward styles to choose from. You're damn right, Zeno. Oh, yeah. Hey, bring it home. I'm going to expand on this. <laughs> Average person spends almost seven hours a day in front of a screen. Nothing it's out of you it's guys, troublesome. Right? What oh, do you yeah. think about it? Yeah. It's oh, a yeah. lot of time. It's a lot of time. MVMT's blue light glasses help us to change our habits so that we can keep up with a changing <laughs> technological world. Okay. Hey, some big words there, Z. Uh, there's something recommended here. Hey, did, did they say ETC or did they say et cetera? They said ETC, but yeah. I, I guessed. Wow. <laughs> Was I right? Wow. He yeah. had no idea the forward. Good for you, Zito. Look at your brain. Thank you. Two-week break. <laughs> uh, Everscroll blue light filtering glasses start at just $65. Whether you're at the office scrolling through your phone or unwinding from a long day, Everscroll glasses have you covered. Better focus, better sleep, better style. Mm. Amen. Amen. Yeah, that was recommended. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to call it some action here. That a boy. <clears throat> Bring it home, Z. <laughs> Get 15% off today with free shipping and free returns by going to mvmt.com slash McAfee. I don't know if it's a forward or back. They just said slash. So I'm guessing it's a forward it's slash. It's a boy. You're learning. Yeah. Okay. Shop MVMT Ever Scroll Blue Light Filtering Glasses. Protect your eyes and look great doing it. Go to MVMT.com forward slash McAfee. Join the movement. Right. Thank you, guys. Hey, Thank that was you. one of your better readings. Thank you. I improvised a lot there. I don't think that's accurate. It, it very much looked like you read every word from the page. Poorly. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> whoa. whoa. Those are nice glasses, though. I Nick know. looks good in them. They yeah. are awesome. I don't have them on right now. I wish I did. I, I forgot them. My issue with getting LASIK is I can't put on glasses Yeah. until now. Now yeah. I can put on cool glasses mm -hmm. because it is saving my eyes from something. That you spend a lot of time looking at a screen. A lot of time. Mm -hmm. lot There's no breaks for you. Even on the weekends, you're stuck watching football the whole time. A lot of time. Eyes are just burning up. Need to put on glasses. Make me look smarter, too. Maybe we'll spell my name right on it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get back to it. Great reading by you, Zito. I'm Thank proud you. of you, man. Hey. Take a victory lap on that one, bub. Right. Jalen Hurts looks like a real quarterback, by the way. I know a lot of people are saying that. But I just want to let you know, as an official college football analyst, Ooh. I would like it to be known, Jalen Hurts can play the football. Mm -hmm. He looked faster than I remember. He looked faster. He threw the ball better. He looked like the red shoes were a little bit brighter than everybody else's. It's the <laughs> only thing I kind of had a question mark about. Nick Saban taught him to be great. Lincoln Riley is going to teach him how to be dangerous. Somebody tweeted that to mm. me, and I like it a lot. I think Jalen Hurts is a good football player all of a sudden. I didn't think he was good before. I thought he was Tim Tebow. Not Tim Tebow wasn't a good football player. I take back everything that kind of alluded <laughs> to there. <laughs> what I meant was Tim Tebow was a special yeah, football yeah, player. Yeah. 
He was a high effort guy, motivator, ran legs to arm, right? It was a legs to arm player, Tim Tebow. I thought Jalen Hurts was the same thing. A little bit blocky. He was a stud. He had an incredible record, but you're at Alabama. I mean, Zito could play quarterback in Alabama is what everybody says. Mm -hmm. He looked incredible in Oklahoma. The balls were on a dime. He missed two balls, I guess, deep, but I like Jalen Hurts a lot. I like the way two is playing. They're tanking for him down there in Miami. Hopefully he gets hot for Gumpy and the boys down there with the fins, but... I, I like college football all of a sudden. I, th- I have to. <laughs> <laughs> I think Saban for so long didn't trust his quarterbacks. He just had them play not to lose the game. They never really yeah. gave them a chance. Yep. And then Lincoln Riley like thrives with his quarterbacks. So I think maybe you're seeing that a little bit. I like that video of watching him squat 500 pounds. Too. Yeah, I mean, he's a, he's, it, Ty said earlier, he looks like Derrick Henry playing he quarterback. Does. He does. He looks like an mm-hmm. animal. And he's throwing the ball well. Yeah. I and mean, he was smart. He was making smart decisions. There mm-hmm. were chances there where he could have tucked it and run early or something else. He was making smart football decisions. And I think that's awesome for him. I'm happy for him. I like the way uh, Cincinnati plays football, too. I'm going to be honest. <laughs> oh, yeah. Bearcats are hot. We'll talk about that in a second. This upcoming fall, a lot of college football analyzing by your boys here. Maybe not on our live show as much because we're an NFL show for sure be more nfl dominant but i've fallen in love with college football it's i've been forced to watch it okay let's just call it how it is <laughs> <laughs> i have been forced to watch college football when normally i wouldn't normally i would not watch college football i at west virginia i went to west virginia i love west virginia i love the mountaineers never on tv out here so if it's ever on tv i'll stop by west virginia football but i never really had a rooting interest in college football this year due to a profession of mine I have been forced to watch college football and learn about college football. Mm-hmm. I don't know any of the motherfuckers' names still, which, I'm like, <laughs> which is very obvious on TV. There. And I called a cousin a couple of times. Oh, cousin flying around out there. In the <laughs> I can't even see the number from where we're sitting. But I've enjoyed it. I've actually enjoyed watching it and learning about it because the environments are so incredible. Yes. And then the gro- they said that one of the quarterbacks at Cincinnati, Desmond Ritter, grew four inches and put on 55 pounds in one year. Wow. I forgot about that whenever I was in college. Like you show up just like a little kid and then you go through the strength program and you're still maturing at those ages. You're not even an adult yet. I mean, you are. You can vote. You can chew. You can play the lottery. Yeah. You can go to the military. You can do a lot of stuff. <laughs> but you're not really a fully created adult human yet. So I, I think all of that's been very, very awesome. And I'm very excited for the Thursday night games I get to call next Friday, but you get it. Thursday night football on ESPN. Two one and out teams. So far, yeah. I watched those games too. I was like, come on. Wake's got a nice little offense. Hey, they got a freshman quarterback who's mm-hmm. slinging it. Big towel on. Did you see him? He had like the Gatorade towel from the side. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I was very flustered. I was like, you got a whole fucking, that's an equipment room. Get sure. an equipment room towel. I'm sure you won't have that, something prepared for oh, that. Oh, ready for it. Kid's got a blanket on his back. <laughs> <laughs> but our upcoming fall schedule is going to be involving college football, uh-huh. and it's been fun to learn about it. Listen to Herb Street talk, by the way. I'm a big fan of that guy. I like the way Herb Street talks. He gave you a shout out. He did, didn't he? I mean, it was after a personal foul in sports. <laughs> like that. It was still a shout out nonetheless. Uh, but this well, up- Fowler was very excited about the putter. I uh-huh. like that, by the way. He was very excited all game long. I like Fowler. He has an energy about him that seems yes. to radiate a bit. I, I, I think we're going to enjoy this college football season. I'm going in there with a completely blank slate. Like I, I don't really know much about any of these teams, any of these coaches. I, I had no idea it. who Coach Fickle was. They're like, oh, he's the guy. I'm like, yeah, he is. He's the man. He's been, coaching, he's been in Ohio State for 40 fucking years. Oh, you're going to get to sit down with Mac Brown next week. Come on, Mac. Let's talk about it. He likes the ESPN people. They said he'll be nice because he worked at ESPN. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I got a chance to hear him speak at the college football seminar. He was very well spoken because I didn't understand why Mac Brown was Mac Brown. Like, okay, I get it. You're at Texas. Vince Young ran all over people in a Cheesecake Factory. He quit. <laughs> <laughs> like, I understand all that. But Mac Brown was a very smooth talker. He was a good talker. I'm excited for it. Our upcoming fall schedule is going to be outrageous. And um, I'm sorry we took two weeks off. Our studio was literally being built below the one we're in right now. Heartland Radio built their own studio. Mm -hmm. Uh, We're building a studio downstairs currently. It's almost finished. It's been transformed in the last two weeks into something that I think people are really going to like, Todd. Yeah, it's uh, just, I can't even explain it. You're going to lose your mind. I think people are really going to like it. We we look like we're a real show. I used to walk into other people's shows. Foxy knows this. Mm -hmm. Walk into Bleach Report. Walk into Rich Eisen's. Walk in the Sports Illustrated studio. I always look around and I go, oh, shit, this is a nice fucking studio. And then I always find somebody who's like behind camera that looks like they know what they're doing. And before we go on air, I'm always like, how much you guys spend on this studio? <laughs> <laughs> how much you spend on this? Uh, and they're always like, oh, we don't know. We don't know. 
walking into our studio after the two-week hiatus that we've had here, and it's completely transformed, I am going to literally talk to one of the DAZN people, and I'm going to say, this is a nice one. <laughs> <laughs> How much does it cost? <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited to find out. I have no idea. The zone is really taking right? care of us. It they built this great. studio up. It's it's awesome. It's a real TV studio. Yeah. Coolest, yeah. TV Coolest studio. studio imaginable. That's all you had to say. Coolest like, studio <laughs> imaginable. <laughs> but it's been fun. It's been fun to see that. In this two-week break, not only do we have to do that, we had no studio, didn't really have anything. Our upcoming fall schedule is uh, outrageous. I mean, it Insane. is one where if we were to run right into it without some sort of break mentally, physically, I'm not sure we'd be able to make it through. <laughs> and when I say that, I know... That sounds soft, especially in comparison to like real jobs, mm -hmm. right? But our job is to be up. Our job is to be like, hey, let's go. Here we go. Let's have a good time. Our job is to bring the energy. Let's go ahead and give a mental vacation for these people. Here's the schedule, okay? We're documenting everything, by the way. Mm -hmm. Foxy's making like 13 documentaries this upcoming fall. So go ahead and toss that into the schedule. Yep. Monday mornings, we'll be releasing a documentary about the week prior. Excited for that. Shout out to Roman. Uh-huh. For the hardest working man in sports. Yep. Great title. Because if you know anything about Roman. Mm. They weren't hitting on anybody. I was just talking about the oh. penis getting on. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Monday mornings. Uh. Get up on ESPN in New York City with Mike Greenberg, Rex Ryan, Dan Orlovsky, awesome. Chris Mortensen. Live oh. in the studio. Then directly from there. We will head to World Trade Center, where the DAZN headquarters are, hop in a studio there, two-hour live radio show, me and a few of the guys. Then we'll record a podcast from there directly after that. Then we hop on a plane from New York City, fly back to Indianapolis. Tuesday morning, live radio show from Indianapolis, recording of Heartland Radio in the afternoon, hop on a plane, fly to where Thursday Night Football is. <laughs> Wednesday morning, live radio from where Thursday Night Football is in a box truck studio that Block Dad, Tim McAfee, built from his bare hands Woo! the last three weeks. Dominated. Th Hey, this might be the new standard in all of yes. broadcasting. I mm -hmm. think so. A mobile box truck studio that is fully functional, has full internet capabilities, and is ready to go with pretty good space inside. Tim McAfee built that. So let's assume there's going to be some things that are going to be a little <laughs> bit suspect, but just like Zito says, it'll work out. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. So that's on Wednesday morning. Then record a podcast after that for Thursday release for Pat McAfee show. Production meetings for the Thursday night football after that. Go to sleep in the city that we're in. Let alone potentially heading to an NXT taping in Orlando for Wednesday nights, which are live on the USA Network. Mm. Go to sleep. Wake up Thursday morning for Thursday night football uh, city. Do live radio from the box truck studio. Record a podcast for Friday podcast for Pat McAfee show. Take a nap. Head to the stadium, call Thursday Night Football, hop in a plane, fly back to Indianapolis for Friday morning's live radio show in Indianapolis, Indiana. Then go ahead and just sail it off into the weekend. Go ahead and have a good old time, Saturday, Sunday, yelling at my phone, watching college football in the NFL. Put that on repeat for 14 weeks and let's fucking go. <laughs> and people don't understand, the weekends aren't the weekends because your brain is on all weekend long because... You can't just sit back and relax and watch the games. You have to fucking... I'm learning a whole new sport. Yeah. <laughs> I'm learning at college football this past weekend. I was... It was great. Yeah, I was. I was... <laughs> there was some that was tough to watch. It was like, God damn it. I don't want to have to watch this. Watching? But both of these teams are potentially going to be on Thursday Night oh, Football yeah. later in the year. Yeah. So I have to watch this game just so I can know something about these teams before going in. Unlike the Cincinnati UCLA game where I knew nothing about the teams <laughs> other than what we learned it. Um, training camp training camp at higher ground so this upcoming fall we're going to be on a run here we're going to be doing it and we're very thankful and excited for everybody that's going to follow along with us this is the 100th episode of this podcast and I couldn't even fathom doing all this on first podcast thinking that this was going to happen we had to relaunch an entire RSS feed we had to relaunch an entire podcast we had to redo everything here we are 100 episodes later I don't know how many Heartland Radio podcast episodes later Heartland Radio 2.0 podcast 100. Later. 100. but now we're about to just go and this is going to be a good time. Mm -hmm. And we're very thankful for everybody's patience for the last two weeks. We didn't like it either. No. no. I had a lot of shit to say. Mm -hmm. I had a lot of shit to say. And you're going to get a lot of us. The week that we're off, the fucking luck thing happens. I know. Why? 
<laughs> it's it's so you Why? can be free to go on everybody else in America's yeah. show. By the way, good business. Andrew yeah. Luck retired. Good for business. Happy he's happy. Good for our business. Uh-huh. You think Andrew found out you weren't doing any shows? Oh, my God. He's like, that's why he did it. Uh, we got to do it. My Mac he's on vacation. <laughs> <laughs> I want to bat for him because he deserved it. Mm. He's a hardworking guy. Mm. I'm happy for him. I don't know what he's going to do, but it was good for business. And um, I can't wait to just do everything. The live radio shows I'm really pumped about. Mm-hmm. Open phone line, Gumpy screening the calls. Gumpy got here, a job here in America, American dream coming true because of a phone call into a, our live radio show. Now he's running the phone lines. Hello. That's a, that's a story. Yeah. Wow. Hey. You got that anywhere else? Hey, write that story there, uh, Disney. Write that as a movie. <laughs> I work for Disney now. I got a paycheck from them. <laughs> write, a, write, a, uh, write a movie about that. The little Canadian that could. <laughs> choo, choo. It's like the Canadian Joe Dirt. <laughs> yeah, it is, it is. That is hilarious to think about. That is what Guppy is. But we're going to have a lot of fun. We're going to go on this ride together. And uh, the documentaries are going to be cool to see, I think. Because mm-hmm. all the little shit behind the scenes... I think people are going to enjoy. I, th- I really do think people are going to enjoy. This is the way we operate. is a hilarious thing. Eh? I mean, it's we get uh, we have contracts right now. Westwood One, DAZN, ESPN, WWE. I'm not sure there's any company in the history of companies that has had four publicly traded companies basically do deals together. There's going to be some hiccups. Let me look real quick. Nope. Nope. None of them. <laughs> <laughs> Todd with a quick Google. And I'm excited to see how it all works out. I could die by November. I could be a dead man by November. It's we'll up, see, but we're going to give it a go. We're going to give it a goddamn We're going to give it a go. Mm-hmm. We are, and I'm excited for it. I'm very thankful for everybody listening. Sorry about the two weeks. I hope the Jacoby Brissett conversation was good. I hope our chitter-chatter here about life was good enough for the two weeks. If not, Marshawn Lynch is coming on Thursday, and Steve Nash is coming on Friday. Get ready. Heartland Radio tomorrow. Debut. We're back. Here we <laughs> Go. <laughs> oh boy, Todd. We're all lucky to be here and excited and thankful for you. Uh, Ty Schmidt, hit the music.